extract brew for you today. So the extract brew, a lot of brew, first time home brewers start out that way. It's usually the simplest, most easiest way to get at it. It's a lot less intimidating than all grain. After this one, we will do a brew in a bag, all grain video too, following this video up. But well, I mistakenly bought an extract kit recently, so I'm not gonna let it go to waste. So we're gonna do one and I thought it would be great video content. So here we go. This is what you'll get when I, this is a Northern Brewer extract kit. Um, cur sure, there's a bunch of different companies, brands. I encourage you to shop price, order one or two, see which one you like. So you order an extract kit, what are you gonna get? Nice little box with everything in it. So here's what we got, a little packaging paper, we don't care about that, but within the box itself, you're gonna have a bunch of stuff. What's well, starting out, probably intimidating, but first things first, interesting enough, as the extract kits say, here you go, extract. In this case, golden malt extract syrup. Basically malted barley refined down to syrup. So I'm gonna set him aside. What next? This is actually, for an extract kit, pretty crazy. Um, we got some Cascade hops, so you're gonna have some hops. I like to lay my stuff out, match it up. Uh, what else? We have a little bit of grain, which is really interesting in a extract kit. Usually you don't have that, so we have a little grain action in this one. More hops, a lot of hops for this one. So we have Citra, a bunch of Citra hops. So I put those there. Aside and again, I like to lay everything out so I know what I got. What else? We have more hops, 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 hops. This is an IPA, so obviously it's going to be very hoppy. Got Centennial hops, Cascade hops. I feel like I'm Forrest Gump here. All sorts of hops. But what else? We got a, a dried malt extract. Some of these are just going to be dried extract and not liquid. But so there you go. You see all our ingredients. We also have a little sock, which I'm guessing is going to be for our grain. So I'm going to set that there. And also, what are you going to get? You're going to get directions. These directions are pretty good. They usually pretty much set it out for you exactly what you're supposed to do. So if you follow this, you usually have pretty good results. So I typically set that all aside. And I'm going to grab the camera. We'll give you a little visual of what exactly you have there. So. As I said, here's what we have. You have your dried malt extract, a variety assortment of hops, you can see that, and a grain blend and a grain sock, and then your extract. So looking at the first time can even be a little intimidating, but what you need to do is basically look at this. So what are they telling us? Minimum requirements, a home brewer starter kit for Kaya gallon batches. We're plenty good. We're going to use a 10 gallon, 10 gallon kettle, so we're well and above that. We need a carboy. They're recommending a 5 gallon glass carboy. I, use, I like to use um, big malt bubblers myself. I did a review on those. You can look at those. And they're talking about beer bottles, so we'll talk about that later. My yeast for this kit is already in my fridge. That's one thing to say. Any of these kits you do, take your yeast out, throw it in the fridge. And if you have liquid yeast, I don't use liquid yeast. I, I don't think it's worth the money personally. I just use dry yeast and I've been fine with that. So next part of this, what are we doing? We need to collect and heat 2.5 gallons of water. Okay, so with that deal, we need to get 2.5 gallons of water into our boil kettle. So I'm going to put the camera back up here. And before I do that, I want to do another step. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to move our kettle over to my burner. You're going to also need to sanitize your fermenter, which they don't talk about right away. I like to do that first. I got myself a bucket here, a five gallon bucket with a sealable lid. And I just label it star sand. And I put my star sand in there. Normally, I don't bring my star sand out. But I did today just because for this video. 
and star sand one ounce for five gallons directions are on the back of it you probably can kind of see that really simple unloosen your top to the one I usually do two and a half gallons um, they have a measuring thing that shows you half ounce or sorry one ounce for five gallons I usually go two and a half on a brew there that's plenty so just like that all we do is simply dump that into our bucket so with that said I need 2.5 gallons of water for my star sand um, that's nothing exciting I'm gonna carry that in the house take my pitcher at 2.5 gallons of that I'm gonna put 2.5 gallons of water in my brew kettle as per the directions and we will be back with you so what am I doing again I'm getting my star sand ready I'm going to add water to that, mix that up, I'm putting water in my brew kettle, I'm going to hook up my protein burner, and we'll be starting to roll on this. And also when I do my star sand, I'm going to grab a bubbler and put some star sand in it. So, that are the first basic steps. Unpack your kit, read the directions, see what they're telling you to do, follow those step by step. It does look a little intimidating at first with all this stuff laying here. But the directions go pretty good. There's a... Uh, a time schedule for each one of these things I've messed it up before you do don't worry about it try to follow it but it will probably turn out just fine so I'm gonna be back with you in a couple seconds I'm gonna fill my water and I'll be back as you can see we got the boil kettle lined up we got the propane tank I don't have it fired up yet but you'll see nothing but water in there 2.5 gallons and if I look at my marker on a kettle it's one recommendation I do too if you get a kettle with marking that's nice so you don't have to be so specific but we're right there and in this case if we're a little more or a little less it's not a big deal because we add water later so again a visual of everything we got and I'm gonna take you inside really quick and show you the sanitation step they say to do it later I don't I like to be ready and going so here's what I did. I took my star sand, put it in a bucket. If it's working, you can tell it's foamy. I just use this pitcher or one like this. This is a one gallon pitcher, makes it easy for me. And I started right, right away. Here's my big mouth bubbler. Here's my airlock. Here's my airlock grommet. Different styles of airlocks. I take my grommet, throw it in the star sand. I'm gonna take my airlock apart, stake the lid off, throw him in the star sand. Take that piece, star sand, star sand. And some people like the S-locks, that's fine. I take my lid, I'm gonna throw that all in there. And what I'll do next is I'll pour some of the star sand into my big mouth bubbler and I'll just leave it hang there and I'll swish it around when I'm ready to dump it. Really simple step, but I like to have my sanitation stuff ready and going before I get started. They recommend kind of the middle, I don't. I like to have everything set up and going. So I'm going to put star sand in there. I'm going to fire up the kettle and I will show you the additions and the boil as best as I can. So that's your steps already basically. Unbox, look at the directions, get your equipment together, get your sanitization equipment together and go for it. I also have that funnel. I'm going to grab that and throw that in the star sand right away too. Um, so I'm ready to go when I'm ready. So I'm going to get everything fired up. I'll be back in a couple. All right, guys, I have my water to temp. And what they're telling me, this is kind of actually a neat kit because it actually gives you a little brew in the bag idea of what we do here. But it tells you basically to add your water, collect 2.5 gallons of water, which we did. That's in the kettle. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, for mail order, customer gets grain, blah, 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 crushed it. Uh, extract's always going to get crushed. I'll show you all grain, how I crush my grain. Now they're telling us to steep the grain for 20 minutes or until water reaches 170, remove bag and discard. So what are they getting at there? My temp, and I'm going to show you that, is hovering. Wow, I'm a little hot. Um, I'm over 180, so I'm not too worried about that. Some people get really anal with it, but here's the deal. Here's kind of, I'm happy with this kit now. This wasn't planned. This is just a little grain bag is all it is. So to make wort, when we do brew in the bag, we basically put the grain in the bag and we steep the grain like you're gonna steep tea. So I'm gonna take the grain they gave us, our, let's see if I say that, Belnisha grain blend, 
freshly packed, blah, blah, don't care. But you can kind of see that. Take a little whiff, actually smells good. We're gonna pour this into the bag and then I'm gonna tie it shut. So let's see if I can do this without making a total mess. And I suppose the worst thing that we could do is drop it. Now I'll probably jinx myself, but honestly, if I did, I'd keep going anyhow. I'd rather work with the beer and it doesn't miss a ingredient, it does. Well, and that's interesting. We're getting grain powder, which is fine on my table. Eh, it's not the end of the world. Um, and that's kind of typical. So, I'm just going to continue to pour my grain in there. I'm not going to worry about my dust. I don't care about grain dust. So as you can see, I just poured that in there. And now we got our grain bag, if you will, or our grain sock. I'm just going to tie a knot around it. And this is basically brewing the bag, people. I'm going to try to save this bag, so I'm not going to go insanely tight on this. But here's our little grain sack full of grain. And what we're going to do is I'm going to actually let my temp settle down a little bit. I'm going to show you that. Yeah, I'm still climbing. So what I'm going to do shortly, I'm going to set my grain bag down here for you to see. Just sat at my grain bag and that, this is a great little kit to show you guys this because this is basically brewing the bag right here with this kit so i lucked out but i want to be around 170 as you can see i'm already way too hot yeah, be careful what you do i'm just going to pull that lid off and this one doesn't have a handle um meaning to hold my lid and I should have had something to hold my lid instead of, and I wasn't right quite thinking. But I'm just going to let my water tool temp down, and that'll come down fairly decent. It actually already moving, had a lot of steam trapped in there. You can kind of see that. And in a couple minutes here, I'm going to drop that grain bag in, and I'll show you that. Then we're going to steep it for 20 minutes. I'm going to stay, I'm going to probably drop mine in right around that 170 mark, and then put the lid back on and let it steep for 20 minutes and grab a tongs and pull it out. So I will be back with you when I do that. Okay, we have temp, so I'm gonna show you that. I got my little grain bag. I was looking for 170, if I follow those directions, you can see I'm a tad bit over 170, but you can see how quick we're dropping in temp with the lid off. And you can kind of see there too where it says steep, it's right around 160. So I'm just gonna take my little grain bag and I'm gonna drop that guy right in there. I'm just gonna do that a little bit because really not necessary. And kind of, this is not a step, but I, I wanna get everything I can get out of that. So I'm just gonna swirl mine around a little bit. They don't tell me I have to do that, but you can see the steeping action too. And then I'm just gonna, let, at 170, it's, I'm not worried about it burning. I'm just gonna let it lay and go. And kind of see we got a little bit of stuff falling in there and that could be part of the grain bag. That could be the grain itself. I'm not too excited about all that. that. That all fall to the bottom of the fermenter when you do it anyhow. And now I'm gonna put my lid on. So we're sitting at, see how quickly we dropped. We're at 160, but we're right in the steeping zone. And I got a propane burner, so I might fire that up a little bit to keep us in there, but we need 20 minutes. So I'm gonna take my cell phone and I'm just gonna use a timer. Or if people don't like phones, use whatever timer. And I'm gonna start going there. As you can see, the countdown begins. So we'll let that steep and I'm gonna, and you see just by putting my lid on there, my kettle temp actually went up a little bit. So we're right, if I look at my gas one thermometer and I've trusted, and I've checked this one, it's fairly accurate. So we're right where we need to be. So I'm guessing that 120 and we're actually creeping up a little bit. If I'm right in that high end of steep or low end of steep, I'm perfectly fine. I don't want to be like insanely hot here, but if I stick between, I was going to say 170, 150, I'm perfectly fine with it. I think we'll just do just well there. But as you can see, we're steeping that. If we we're going to do brew in the bag, 
Exa this is exactly what we'd be doing, but we'd have a whole bunch of grain in there. And I know I'm talking to you about extract, but I just kind of want to mention that too because that'll be the next video. But we're basically steeping away. I'm at 172. Uh, I'm cool with that. I'm not going to get overly excited. It's going to cool down, but you'll see how much temperature loss that lid does. I mean, if we're really worried, I want to take a little temp off. We can do that. You can start seeing the steam roll out of there. And even by doing that, you can see that thermometer move. So your lid is important, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're right back to, you can see that just fall with that lid off. We're right going down to 170 already. So you want to really be specific. You can watch that temp that way. You can use your propane burner. And I mean, they recommend in 170. Um, you can kind of see too, I'm going to start creeping back the other way, but again, right in that area, I'm fine. It doesn't have exact, uh, today's a beautiful day. I think I'm sitting at 70 degrees, so almost perfect brew bearing weather, not too cold, not too hot. Everything should be relatively perfect conditions in the garage environment, but we're going to do that. The next step I'll do is I'll grab a tongs and I'll pull that out. We need something to put that bag in. That bag's going to be hot, so I'm going to grab a little kettle. I'm going to save that bag because they're reusable. No reason to throw them out. Might use it for hops or something down the road. So I will be right back when we get this done steeping. My timer goes off. I'll pull that off and show you what I'm doing next. All right, so what's next? We are close to time. I got two minutes and 37 seconds counting. Not to get too excited about that. If you go over a little bit, you do. It's not the end of the world. It's not a, I know people say it's exact science. Well, it can be, but eh, it's a little forgiving. So in the meantime, why not talk about what I do to make this process easier. When I use a direction sheet, which come with these kits, I just go down and as you can see, I just check off what I'm doing. But, and then another thing I do is I read those directions and I line everything up so I know when to do it. So in this case, our second, first piece will be do, do our extract. Second will be Centennial hops. Third will be Cassade hops. And last will be Citra. And to, you're noticing I got a couple extra hop packets. Well, <clears throat> according to these directions, uh, I don't need those. So I'm gonna follow the directions. I'm gonna say that it's uh, error. I'll double check myself, but, and you know, make sure your packets say what they are. Like you can see this one, one ounce. It says one ounce, those should be accurate. Human error is more accurate to throw them in. If we got extra ingredients, we do. Awesome, I just use it on a different beer day, brew day. So that's basically laying it out there. I got a minute and 23 seconds until I can pull that. But just kind of wanted to give you that. You also see my hydrometer here. And I don't know if I'll get into that with you today or not, but something a lot of guys like to do, it shows your original gravity, tell you be able to figure your alcohol in your beer. But to me, if you're patient in your fermentation, it's a nice step to get into and I encourage you to start doing it. But if you miss it and don't have one of those yet, it's not the end of the world. Your day is definitely not gonna be done. I'm kind of watching my time. I got 55 seconds. And you can see the kettle here too. We're still sitting at 160. We're still in that steep zone. I just got a basic stock pot down there with the tongs. That's all I'm gonna do to pull mine out. So what do I have for time? I got a whopping 36 seconds. So that's gonna go off. So I'm gonna grab my lid off. And I'm just gonna dump my water back in. Not that that water really matters because there's nothing steeped in that water. And I'm gonna stick him over here. Make sure it doesn't fall off. And then I'll give you a visual. Here's basically our steeped grain in there. And it's pretty light colored yet, but obviously we haven't had a whole lot of grain in there. This is a small little grain bag. And I'm just gonna swish them around there a little bit. And you can hear my timer going off. Get a little more of that grain out of there. And they're not telling me to do this step, but I would rather have more than less. I, I want a flavorful beer. So I'm just swishing this around. People are, what about oxygen? We're not in that step right now. Oxygen's not a problem at this point. And I'm gonna put my tongs on the side. That alarm drives me nuts. And shut that off.
Maybe. Okay. So that's taken care of. So the next step, since I got this, and I know this is an extract brew, but I just kind of want to give you a heads up when I do all grain, kind of what we're worried about here, folks, because I'm get I, I, I sorry. I don't know how much this little bag weighs, but here's the thing. Look at that drain. Now, I'm just holding this little bag with the tongs. It's fairly far out from me, and you can see how that's draining. So when we get into all uh, brewing the bag, that's why you really need something to hold these bags. I mean, it gets really hard to hold on to these for an extended amount of time. And you can see how long it's taken to drain. And I, I mean, I wish you could smell it. it. Smells awesome. But, so I could have rigged my pulley up to show you that, but I didn't even look at this kit close enough and know that it did that. And if we're doing a grain, some people squeeze them, some people don't, some people say that's wrong. Um, doing all grain, we get to the point where we want all this beer, and I know I'm, I, I'm trying not to talk about all grain, but I wanted to give you a heads up on that. But uh, we'll talk about more, but it's just interesting. Now I'm going to throw that in there. So what I'm going to do is set him in the kettle. I'm going to let that cool off because I'm going to actually keep that little bag. And there you can see the basis of our wart. This will be done with this, but now going back to my directions, what's it going to tell me? It's basically going to say steep it. We did that. And now it wants me to bring it to the boil and remove the kettle from the burner and steer the six gallon malt in. Uh, so why would they have me bring it to the boil and stir it in? That's kind of interesting. Typically with extract, I think they're worried about is it burning to the bottom. So we are going to bring it to the boil, remove the kettle from burner. I'm not. Stir in the malt and the extract, sir, return to a boil. The mixture is now called wort. Okay, great. So interesting enough, wort is unfermented beer. And now it says add to Centennial Hops at the boil for 60 minutes. Uh, it's kind of interesting to me because with extract, we're really not steeping nothing. I'm going to shut off the burner. I am not going to pull my kennel off of there. I'm not really worried about it. So basically at this point, we already pulled that out, the bag out. And we want to bring it to a boil. So we're going to bring it to a boil. That's my next step. That's kind of difficult with the camera. And I will show you when I add my extract. I'm bringing the tripod over and we'll see that. But I'll be back in a few. All right, we are starting to boil. And I got to admit, I made a little mistake. You can see the boil action there. I'm going to let that go a little bit. You can see my temperature is only sitting at... Uh, we're... 190 and we're boiling which would be weird but my probes out of it some of you might say well did we steep the grain run you know what probably but it smells good it's got good color um, we could re-steep it but at this point I don't really think it's worth it we got quite a bit out of there but that's boiling really nice and you can see that if I had a small kettle we're really risking boil over right now so I'm going to kill that. We got plenty of heat right there. And I'm going to throw the extract in it. One thing I want to say about the extract too, make sure you prep it. I took the label off. I took this off. So I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod and stir this in. And I'm thinking that's adjusted decent. So move a little bit over. And then they say remove from heat, but again, on a gas burner, you're pretty much losing the heat. So I'm just going to grab my spoon and just slowly stir that in. And of course, it's going to be hot, but I, I want that stirred in pretty well. Does it matter the liquid or the powder? You know, it doesn't really give you directions. I kind of like the idea of the powder first, so we don't clump it anywhere with adding more stuff into it. So I'm just going little by little here. And it's going to coagulate a little bit too as you dump it because you're going to get that hot water. But you kind of can see that. Not again too worried about it. Like I say, it's pretty forgiving. 
So I'm going to stir that in and there's a lot sitting on my spoon, but kind of got a little mess there, which is understandable. Uh, get that little dough ball out of there. So I'm going to call it good. I'm not going to get overly excited. I typically don't and things work fine. So I have that. And I do got a lot of clumping there, so I'm actually going to go get a spatula and I'm going to scrape that off and I'll be right back. You know, I messed up my temp, I'm too used to using ruin the bag and you can see how sticky that stuff is but I just can't I want to get that off my spoon and I wanted that in my beer so just knock that off I'll clean that later and I'm not really worried about my spatula but I'm gonna try to melt some more of that off of there and again doesn't have to be perfect So I'm going to stir this in a little more and as hot as this is it should be fine because it's going to, we got to boil it again anyhow. So now we got the powdered extract in. Now to me the worst part about extract brewing, the liquid extract. So it would be really nice to have a partner here but I don't right now. So. I'm just going to slowly pour that in like that. I'm going to try to keep my spoon out of it. I'm going to do a little whirlpool action to get it all poured in there. And basically right now what we're doing is making wort. And we're going to have good color even if that grain was a little under steep due to the temperature. But the way it looked I think we're just going to be perfectly fine. And I'm going to try to pick up my spoon a little bit so I'm not exactly right on the bottom of my kettle. This is where a wood mash turn would be superior. And we're going to keep adding this guy until we're done. But you're getting a really nice smell now, a really nice color. You can't see that obviously, but um, this is basically how it's done. Um, this is a key thing, my mistake on my temperature goes back to knowing your equipment. I haven't done a extract for, oh, good six months, so kind of forgot that it doesn't cover my temp probe. And I really should have did a temperature probe with it. But I'm just going to con keep continuing to stir this extract in. The good thing about extract, it's kind of hard not to end up with stuff. Even if I forgot that whole grain bag, it might change the flavor a little bit. But if I never had this recipe, I don't even know how it's going to turn out. I've done other ones where I've forgotten things. And you know what? I, I can't say if it turned out bad or worse or better because I didn't add that ingredient. So if you miss something, I'm gonna say don't freak out, keep going. And at this point too, I, I got, I'll wait a little bit for that extract to slow down. But if we were doing this on a kitchen stove, obviously we'd take it off the burner or if a gas stove is not such a big deal because your heat's ended anyhow, but. And you know what, that's pretty much it. There's a little bit left there. Try to get a little bit more out of there. Okay, enough of that for me. I'm gonna call it good. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a look at that. Here's what it looks like. We have wort. So what's wort? Unfermented beer. As you can see, as you can see, my stir spoons a mix. Next thing I'm gonna do is bring it back up to a boil and add my hops. So that's my next piece. So 
I need to light my burner and all that, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm standing right next to the kettle here, so I'm going to go do this, give myself a little room, and I'll bring it back. But here's my Centennial Hops. We're going to add half a pack of these. Northern Package is about one ounce, so sometimes it's more or less. I got quite the boil going on there. That's actually way too much. So this is where you have to watch boil over. When it takes off, it takes off. Honestly, it's more aggressive than I want to. So what I like to do is get my boil to mellow out before I add my hops. I'm happy with that boil if I can keep that. So that's looking pretty good. That's the nice thing about a propane burner. Sorry, I got my radio on. Propane burner because it's instant heat. I think that's why a lot of people like the propane. You're using convection stove, obviously you don't have that option. If I was using a three gallon kettle, that could have been problematic. But we got a nice decent rolling boil. I'm supposed to add 0.5 centennial hops. You got one ounce, so I'm gonna add about half of this. And then I'm gonna boil for six minutes and I'm gonna do other hop additions. So I'm gonna throw the truck camera up here again. I'm going to do a little adjustment, make sure we're good to go. Let me take a peek. So we, we should be in the frame of view here. And I'm trying to be careful why I do this video. These are actually hot pellets. So what are you going to see? That's what they're going to look like. Little pellets like that. And all I'm going to do is it's recommending about half of them. Or if we wanted to do more crazy hops, we could hop it up and do more. Um, but let's do about half of that as the kit recommends. So that was roughly half. I got a little extra hops. Let's show you kind of what that looks like. Kind of looks like it just got slime. And I want to stir my hops in a little bit. And this kit has directions of stirring your hops in at various times. So I did go ahead and clean my spoon, not really a necessary option, but I'm just give my hops a little bit of stir and you get a really good smell going on there. And we'll let that settle in there. I would do them all, but this is an IPA, but it's supposed to be kind of on a lighter, bitter scale IPA. So I'm, I'm not gonna do all the hops. I'm gonna keep with the direction and so next up, I boil this for 60 minutes, but I got hop addition, ad, uh, additions at 40 minutes and so on. So I'm not going to show you that, but that's all you do is dump your hop pellets in at additions. And once we get that all done and boiled off and hops are ready to go, put them in the fermenter. That's the next thing I'll show you. The rest isn't exciting as far as hops addiction, uh, dip, sorry additions but we'll be back when it cools off and i'll get my heat managed and i'll show you the, the next step which is basically put it in the fermenter all right i got all the hop additions done and all that so here's what we're looking at you can see we're sitting at a temp of 120 according to that but again that's not in there it just quit boiling so it should be a lot hotter than that what you're seeing now is your beer wart what else is seeing is my wart chiller which is a Hydra by Jada Brewing. So you can see that. My setup is a little submersible pump, a quarter horse Coleman, and I use two hoses. And basically what I'm gonna do is I need to chill this. This direction's saying to 100, and I'm thinking that's because you're doing a water addition. When you do a brew in the bag, typically that's not the case, but then about three quarters of a gallon of water, so about three quarts enough to prime my pump in there so the next step i'm going to do is i'm going to put my chiller in and knock this temp down once we do that we'll get the fermenter out here actually uh, and we'll bring that out but i'm gonna knock my temp down first so bear with me and i'll show you that hopefully i can get most of this on the tripod i'll do a little adjustment here Okay, that looks good. So you should be able to see the process. So first off, I did rinse off my chiller. So 
Well, I'm just going to immerse my chiller. And in this particular case, since I don't have a lot of wort in there, I don't have a lot in the hydra, so it's going to take a little longer. But again, I don't have a lot of wort. So I got my chiller in there. We're going to chill this thing down to under 100. And because we're adding cool water to it too. So I'm going to fire that up. I'll show you how that looks. can't really see a whole lot right now so I'm going to pull this out and you're not going to see a whole lot here but you can hear my pump running and let's see we should be knocking down that temp you can see that slowly creeping down now well, creeping down pretty good so basically what we're doing is we're circulating ice cold water through this we were sitting at pretty uh, 120 when I started doing this and of course this temp readings off because we're sitting at the kettle too because it's not submerged but we're gonna knock this down we don't have a lot of wart so I'm thinking I'm gonna get by with about 10 pounds of ice which you can kind of see here too I'll show you this we're circulating water pretty heavy at least to the speed of what a garden hose would be or not that's why I like this pump setup um, hoses pump again uh, I can't remember exactly what I paid for um, but I'm thinking under 50 bucks a lot of water saving your cost is your ice but you guys are buying off sale you get in free ice if you have fr ice fr fridge ice from your fridge obviously that's cheap ice there so the cost is the only thing is if you can't produce ice that's the problem but we're chilling that down and I'm gonna let that chill and I'm gonna just trust it and let it run um, I'm still over a hundred I'm not too worried worst case it pops out my pump dries out but I doubt it so what I'm gonna do next here is I'm gonna put two and a half gallons in my sterilized fermenter and get this out here and get this piece rolling a little bit different with extract but I want to show you that so I'll be back in a couple all right I'm gonna go a little bit different direction they want you to top off water in your primary fermenter to f up to two and two more gallons to get you to five gallons I really don't like that idea because I got a big enough kettle to do this if you had a small kettle you'd have to do that but I did it right in my kettle I'm actually chilled past 60 so I'm plenty cold for this to work probably a little too cold but I'd rather have it cooler than hot for my yeast so what I got now my big mouth bubbler that's full of star sand so what I'm gonna do is spin this around clean that out and as they say don't fear the foam swish it around dump it out don't rinse it don't do nothing like that next piece I got my yeast packet in my star sand in my bucket I got my stainless steel funnel obviously I'm wearing gloves I kind of like to be a little more cleaner I got my top for my fermenter so everything I should need there and I'm gonna pull this off and I do want to get a gravity sample so I'm gonna grab a little piece for that and I'm not gonna get in the gravity sample too much but I'll be right back all right everybody I'm gonna try to get everything in here for you so star sand we're just gonna swash him around and yeah ideally shouldn't have touched the bottom with the bucket but that's why I wear dirty clothes I'm gonna take my lid of course there's a hole in it I'm gonna swish that around really good and I'm gonna go do this outside and let it come out the lid and I'm gonna throw my lid back in there and then I'm gonna pull my wart off and don't be scared about a little foam but I'll be right back all right everyone you should be able to see my foamy mess there and that's fine this hands clean didn't touch the bottom I'm gonna just throw that back in my bucket you can see quite a bit here so I'm gonna dump that off just in my garage shouldn't hurt nothing get some of it out if there's some in there I'm gonna call that good I'm gonna put him down there line my funnel up again this is more of a clean hand so I'm gonna use that one and I don't worry about scratching my star sand bucket because obviously full star sand anything that's living ain't gonna sneak out of there so my funnel is all sanitized too at this point again it's my clean hand so i'm gonna try to i'm not gonna worry about that right now 
Now the fun part. So that's all sanitized. Try not to make a mess. I don't think there's a perfect method here folks, but what I try to do is get my funnel lined up so it shoots right down the funnel. Of course you're going to get some there. As you can see I'm kind of slowing down here a little bit. But you just kind of got to play with it. This is where it's really nice to have a helper and yeah I know I cheated there. I got my dirty hand in there which I shouldn't have done. So I'm fairly happy with that. I'm going to wash that hand off a little bit. Probably not really going to do much here, but rub a little star sand in there in case I did get anything. Rather be sorry than safe. Usually I pull my chiller out too, but when I'm alone I typically don't. And this is a six and a half bubbler. We should have usually five gallons. The bubbler is marked and it doesn't seem much, but we got quite a bit more in this kettle. That's why I say be careful. Wear, don't wear clean super clothes. Nice thing about what we've done here though, this with this extract brew, we're going to get darn near everything out of it. There's going to be a little trub in it. So your trub is the stuff you don't want on the bottom, but compared to an all grain brew, probably be a little bit less. And try to get most of the good stuff off because you're losing beer if you don't. My chiller is hanging up there. Okay, at this point, the rest is kind of junk. So I'm going to shut my valve down. That's all cleaned up. That's taken care of. So, as you can see, we're six and a half gallons. If I go out I'm right at five, exactly where I want to be, and you can't probably see that, but need to get going here. Um, Try not to ruin my sanitization here, but I'm going to show you. See my markers there, we're at, that would be where well, we're at at one, two, three, four. That head will settle in there too. We should be right close to five gallons total. We could top that off, but that head's going to settle down too. That would be your six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six, five, I'm happy with that. I'm going to let it go at that. Hopefully you can see what else I'm doing. And so right now, I got my yeast packet in my hand. I got a sanitize scissors. And I'm gonna be careful to push my yeast down. I want everything at this point sanitized as possible. So I'm gonna cut my yeast. I'm gonna throw my scissors back in there. I'm just gonna dump my packet in there. And I guys, I'm, I'm a fan of dry yeast. I'm gonna get rid of this. And do that. So I'm basically set up. Now I'm gonna take my fermenter cap. Try not to put that all in there. And like I say, I, I could add a little bit more water to this guy. Because what are we sitting at? We're sitting at one, two, three, four gallons. We should really be at five. So actually, I'm going to cheat a little bit and do that quick. This is exactly why I like my pitcher, because now I can just pull that off. I'm just going to add a little bit, and I did a little bit warmer here. And that won't hurt me, because that will aerate my yeast up a little bit. And hopefully get right up 
and we're there. We're almost to five gallons. I'm gonna call it good. A pitcher is a lifesaver to me. So why would we lose stuff? Um, boil off, and then the big kettle like this, you're gonna have more boil off versus your small one on the stove. So that's all nice and clean. I'm gonna put him on there, and I'll take you a picture downstairs when I do this too. Looking for my grommet, I want that clean. So we'll, we'll put that on like that. Ideally, a lot of guys put star sand in right away. I don't like to do that anymore because it kind of seems to fill your fermenter full of star sand. I don't want that. So I apologize if you can't see some of this. And of course, I can't find my little cap. Usually they're fairly easy to find, but all right, anyhow, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it in there. I know I'm dripping some star sand, which I'm fine with. Now the fun part. Um, I'm gonna leave the camera core recording, but I'm gonna carry this down. I'll show you downstairs when I set it up and I top off my star sand. All I do is pour it in there. I'm not gonna wait too long because I'm already burning up time, kind of giving it too much more time than I'd like to expose it. So I'm going to stop there and I'll, and I'll show you when I get this downstairs, but fun part carrying it down right now. Yeah, I am down in the fermentation room. I was hoping to get you a little more video of taking this down, but I was kind of concerned it's hard when you're video and you're by yourself. It just adds an element to this. But what I did is I mentioned I was missing my cap. I thought it was in my bucket. I dumped all my star sand. It wasn't there, so I don't know if I dropped it on the side if it's laying in my kitchen. So what I'm going to say too, it's always a good thing to have extra parts. These are a bunch of extra airlocks. I snagged a cap off. Those airlocks are a couple bucks. Oh well, if I lost when I lost, some keeps your beer from getting contaminated and all that. A couple bucks, it's just going to happen, folks. And so I dumped my star sand. I also needed something else. So I used a little bit of vodka to fill my airlock. And I do that from time to time. I could have pulled it off my bottle, but... Ah, I had to soon make it simple, take my vodka and be done and be safe and get moving instead of screw with that. But as you can see, I have filled up right to the five mark level, so we're going to be about perfect. That'll fall out. We'll be a little less than five gallons. I'm fine with that. I could have added a little more water, but this will settle. So I'll be darn near five gallons, perfectly happy with that. Time to trub and everything sits out. Um... Really only a few of us drink my home brew right now, so if it's great, it's awesome. If it's not, I don't really worry if I'm off a little bit. Um, so now our excuse to brew more. Another couple of things when you see me do the review of the bubblers, what I do now is I don't fill my airlock right away. I push my weight on there. I wish I could have shown you that and push the air as much air out as I can. We might be able to see that. You can kind of see that coming up, but Pretty much should be, there. obviously air in there, but not excessive air that I can push out. I like to put a five pound Olympic weight on mine, keeps the lid down, they're cheap, four or five bucks. And you'll kind of see some stuff dropping out of there right now. Most likely that's yeast, it's just falling, it's hanging out. Not to worry about that. So a couple mistakes I made today, should have watched my temp better, but we got a good looking color. Use this yeast for a while, so I'm expecting by tonight, early tomorrow morning, we should see some bubbling. And if that works, that looks good, we're fine. I mean, if you got a little crud like that, it's going to eventually fall out anyhow. Don't worry about it. Let the yeast do its magic. So I'm going to clean up. And the fun part of home brewing, the dishes, which again, I'm sure none of you care about. So I'm going to wash up, clean up, put my vodka away and everything. Until next time, please like, hit that share subscribe all those good things appreciate watching the channel i will do a brew in the bag in the near future coming up i was going to do a double one today but now of course life gets in my way i got some stuff going but i'm happy to get this one in the fermenter happy to show you so as they say relax don't worry and have a home brew um if it wasn't about 1 30 i'll be cheering you with one, one now but got plenty in the bottles plenty in the kegs but i'm happy we got one in rotation getting ready to rock so again thanks for watching have a great day